special. <laughs> it's show number two. Show number ooh. It may no, be dose. You, dose. Well, dose. Oh, sorry. I don't know my <laughs> Spanish, obviously. Wow, that sucks. Yeah, dose is two. Dose is two. Okay. Yeah. So, and we speak all kinds of languages. Yeah. We're super smart. These are the. Un, do. Do. Do is. Trey. No. Is French. Do it. I remember I took French in uh, high school. <laughs> I really sucked at it. Were you the one that took French? I was the one who took French, and our French teacher was such a sweetheart that we always convinced her that we had so much homework to do that she literally would give us a study hall almost every week, and so we never learned French. That's what I think of French class. Yeah, that's how it worked. So like it was just I learned like un deux trois quatre cinq six and then like je me belle de Vinay, and that was, was it. it. Mostly white girls. It was taking it. We well, that's all my school was. Kind oh, of, but that's it was all your school. Only white. It, it was, was like only four, white people. Four white you girls go, and one dude, and everyone else took Spanish, Spanish because that is practical. You can use I, that in the workplace. Yeah. If you take French, it means you think someday you're going to go to fucking France. I had an and obsession that's a rich with the person. Eiffel Tower. Absolutely. But that's a rich person's game. Oh, Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I, feel, I haven't well, been yet. I really want to go. But that's like a huge goal, right? Sure. But in high school, I did think for a second, I'm like, I should take French. because You were like, obviously smarter than me in high school. Because I should, because I'm going to go, right? <laughs> obviously, everybody goes to France. It's like. Dude, that's why nobody goes. <laughs> Listen, I had Eiffel Tower, yeah, um, lampshade, oh like gosh, lamp thing. Cute. I had like little, you know. Yes, yes, yes. Eiffel Towers over my room. I thought I was gonna go, no. so I learned wee wee. And have you been yet? No. Look, uh, husband, where exactly. you at? No, gonna- <laughs> exactly. We will one day. Like- no, we don't. We're not defamed. We're not defined by a man. We're no. gonna go by ourselves. The we show's go. gonna get so big <laughs> that we are flown. Right, people that are flown to France for yeah. some reason. We're going to do it live we're gonna in t- front of the Eiffel Tower. I'm calling <laughs> it now. Top. You know what that's called? That's called Big Tit Energy, girl. Blumo. <laughs> Somebody stole that that's from us. They tried energy. to fuck in. I love that term. I think it's really good. Because you hear Big Dick Energy. Yeah. And then it was like, well, there's also Big Tit Energy. Yeah. And that's us, ladies. Because I'll get into that in a second. Where are the drinking broettes? We are the drinking Sorry. broettes. With show number two, yeah. we hope you guys are watching we hope you guys are going to go on this journey with us. We're here to serve you. We are. We're here to hang out and have fun. And have fun. And relate and talk. And Absolutely. about the things that they're not going to cover on Drinking Bros. Because yeah. there's so much that they don't that we can sit here and we're like, we got you, ladies. Yeah. We got and there you. are some like cool, down to earth motherfucking ladies that like they do listen to Drinking mm-hmm. Bros. Because they're awesome. Yes. But they would love to have just a little bit more geared towards them. That's what we're doing I don't here. Blame them. This is Tiffany Hart. What she up? is real military. I'm Jesse Wiseman. I play one on TV. But <laughs> she's an actress, guys. <laughs> she's I important. Act military, which is, by the way, people who like who are in military movies or military shows, uh-huh. um, some actors get into a weird thing like they actually know what it's like. You don't. Oh, you think like they, they act do, like they, they get do? Very, well, I like that they get involved in sure. veteran, you know, affairs and start to like do charity work and stuff like this and use their name to help out veteran causes. Mm-hmm. But there are a few that believe, you know, like, they took it a little too far. Yeah, like, really think. They really wanted to serve and they didn't. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So they kind of, they lose themselves a little bit. You but, know, one thing I will say though is my husband so you know when you're in a certain profession and you do it nonstop. So like he obviously is special forces. So they shoot all the yeah. time. It's what they have to do to save their lives, right, and take others. So he's good at that. So when he watches movies where they have like tons of shooting scenes in a, like a military movie, yeah, he's yeah. always judging it. Yes, and he's always so impressed. Keanu Reeves is the one he guy he loves because he goes that dude literally will get with military specialist and we'll get with the experts and learn all of our tactics so that he knows how to do it right in movies and I've i'm been the same a day way day one keanu dude he seems awesome lover where remember there was a while where it was like he was so stupid and people was like oh keanu reeves yeah, and like i was always kind like of thing. yeah and i was like oh well, no. he's just like monotone surfer dude dumb mm-hmm. whatever and i was always like i think he's good dude yeah he's a good guy yeah and, and he keeps proving it, though. And does the work. He's having a Keanu sauce right now. It's a Keanu sauce. I don't even know what that is. It but means, I like, like everybody, everybody. Now he's finally getting some due. Like, everyone's talking about him, and he's yes. awesome. And people are starting to be like, hey, this guy that was, like, 
under our nose this whole time being amazing mm-hmm. and we were lifting up people like justin timberlake mm. now we're gonna actually talk about a good Go guy good that's guy. like you know you know one thing i like about him too is that he's very respectful of women yes and i know that during the whole like me too era and with everything going on he just realized, listen, the last thing I need to do is make any woman feel uncomfortable. You know how, like, when some guys put their hands around your waist and, like, you don't even know them that well yet. And they yeah, put, yeah, them, yeah. put them lower and you're like, bro. Yeah. You kind of look at them like, what are you doing? It's been he a while. Purposely but, yeah. has, <laughs> he purposely has, when oh. he puts his arm around women, he doesn't, like, fully put them around. Oh, like when he's taking just a picture. Be safe, just be safe. Yes. So he is always, yeah. he always keeps his hands hand. Off. But it looks like they're taking it. So he wants them to have the picture, Correct. but does not touch them. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But again, he's been doing that for years. That's this what is I'm not saying. a new. Exactly. People have just been noticing it though now. Exactly. So along with the Tom Hanks is a great guy thing. Oh, my mom loves him. Right. And yeah. he in the whole Me Too thing, he yeah. kind of got risen up as like the guy that he's never done anything to anyone. He's Keanu been Reeves such a good guy. That yeah. guy too. You know who I love? And we talked about this yesterday briefly. What? Post Malone. Oh, that's right. Listen, You're gonna love my Christmas sweater. I, oh my gosh, I can't wait. <laughs> I see so many videos of this guy, whether it's TikToks, YouTube, Instagram, whatever. He is the most down to earth man. He is so loving. He is a, such a genuine person. Yeah. He, even though he's famous as shit, I feel like, and he's, he's really amazing. Insecure, which I, he is. Relate he talks to, to everyone. Yes. He literally I'll, he's like i'll sign everything for you he's not too good for anyone there was a there's a tiktok going around of him like in la or something and he met all these like middle-aged women who were all drunk oh and they were God. like you know all like over him yes. like mr post mr post mr. Like, post. and he was just loving it being nice like signing stuff for them for their daughters i, I was like it. i love him because of that like tall kind of cute but his he's whole, really tall, which but, I didn't realize. Yeah, super tall. But his personality is what makes him so attractive to me. Absolutely. Because, like, if you just look at him, mm-hmm. but that's the same with, look, I've dated some people mm-hmm. that probably weren't attractive um, to classically. Um, okay. But, mm-hmm. like, to me, they were, right? And, and that's all that matters, though. That's how I feel about him, where he's, like, not, if you just look at him and you don't hear him talk or know him, you'd be like, okay. Yeah. But, yeah, I feel like he is such a, like, I don't know, sweet soul. I know there's a lot of stuff going on in there. I saw him in concert. Did you? Yeah, and I had we, we were trying to get an interview with Drinking Bros, and we got very close, and Ross kind of hung out with him for a little bit, him and Okay, Dan. I think I saw pictures of that. Yeah, and they I texted Dan, and I was like, dude. Dude. <laughs> Like I'm where so the jealous fuck? Right yeah. now. Jared hung out with like Yellow Wolf one time, and I was like, "Bro, bro, oh that's my, my dude." I love Yellow Wolf too. So I was like, "What the fuck?" Like, mm-hmm. hello, you can't give a call. Yeah, but you know, it's a last minute thing, whatever. No, I know. But so they kind of got an insight into his schedule and his life and just what he's going through, which is this huge, uh, just surge of success mm-hmm. very quickly oh, it is. from somebody that's just talented and has been kind of doing his fucking shit forever and all of a sudden it's happening for him so um you feel as a mom you kind of like feel bad for it you're sure. like do you know what I mean because you like, can be oh. sympathetic to it yeah because I'm just like I know it's cool but I also know he's very insecure and he's going through you know there's cultural well, appropriation stuff with him and spotlight all the time yeah. too and it, if you're not used to that everywhere he goes oh yeah I can only imagine and he like, doesn't seem privacy? like that kind of person yeah is just completely exposed yes. like you don't have any yes and everyone's in your business nonstop. but the thing that i love about him the most is that i feel like throughout he's always maintained who he is yeah like he hasn't changed he yeah. hasn't let the fame and money and yeah. the girls and everything get to his head because i'm still sure wears he can that. get anyone he wants i think so he was with he had a girlfriend before he got um famous uh-huh. or blew up i guess and he was with her still unclear they may still be together that he didn't announce like a sure. breakup or anything but he was definitely with her continued to stay so with the her one he has written the about, songs about i oh that she probably yeah like well all look the, like cute like songs oh yeah my gosh. yeah yeah my sister went to his concert so yeah. my sister went to lizzo which i love lizzo dude um i would go to a lizzo concert, yeah but like, oh but my sister said it was completely different she was completely different in concert how so so and like no, I love Lizzo. So yeah, no, yeah, just yeah. to her because I didn't see her in concert. And but my sister was wants. like, 
She's like, literally, we paid so much money to watch a chick be like out of breath, laying down on stage half the time. Did she? I don't. And my sister was like, she didn't think that she was out of breath because she wasn't as close. And she was like, yeah, sometimes she was laid down. But I thought it was part of the song. But her friend was like super up close and was like, no, that chick was like, would dance and then lay in this because she was out of breath. She no couldn't sing anymore. I mean, she's. Now she's look, a hefty girl, but she can move, girl. And that was the whole point is like. I love it. You never thought like, oh, gee, she's moving. She's playing the flute. She's got and beautiful singing, curves. Like, I love the, how much she loves her body. Absolutely. And she is gorgeous. There is like uh, she's the cult. She's owning it. You know, the cult of Lizzo right now where people are just like, any, if she said anything, mm-hmm. like if she told me to like go, you know, follow her to the. Oh, I would. Right? You, In an instant. You do it. So yeah. she's she's definitely a very powerful person. I want to go to con- I mean, I love all her music, Absolutely. though. Because I asked my sister. I start quizzing her. I was like, what songs do you know of hers? Right. And she was like, woman great. And I was like, that's not nope. the only one, though. No. Nope. And I was like, and I start naming them all off and singing them to her. And I was like, I should be going to the concert. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then she went to post after. Choo, choo. Yeah. Right? And so, so she's been to post. And Lizzo. Lizzo. Yeah. Her and her man like go to him all the time. But she oh, okay. told me that post was, she said that when she went to post, you can just tell that he genuinely loved what he did. Um, and that he didn't have to put on like a show no. or anything. And he was just good. You could tell he loved what it. What I see about him and just from the like secondhand account mm-hmm. that I got from Dan and Ross is that he's having a hard time maybe in life but on the stage is where he's like do you know what I mean there's no one trying to get to Mm -hmm. actually like grab him and take pictures with him he literally can just that's his one time to be alone and it is you can you go to his concert it is just him by himself on On a walkway he has his band like covered up whoever it may be yeah Yeah. so it is just him it's intimate by himself yeah and you could tell that there's a band back there, but they're not highlighted in any way. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it, it weirdly that's his like alone time. So he's a true fucking artist, man. He's no, got he troubled. Is. And look, the 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 good ones, the real good ones, have issues, and that's just how it's going to go. Do, though. That's the thing. Absolutely, I think sometimes with just celebrities and people who are in the limelight, people assume that like they put them on this pedestal right and they think that they're perfect and they 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 make no mistakes and they do no wrong and that their lives are completely way better than ours and that's not true like don't get me wrong they have they might have fame and fortune and more money well they have money which is the one thing that everyone but at the same time we all have our struggles we all have our issues we're all dealing with stuff um it it does them a disservice i think a little bit sometimes to think that they're like invincible because no one is no you know no and more money, more problems. I mean, I well, don't shit. know. I, mean, I would I love imagine. to find that out. Me too. I said I would love <laughs> to figure that I out. I would love to see if it actually is more problem. Yeah. Sorry, mo problem. Sorry, mo. Yeah, I you- would love to see that it, if mo money is actually, in fact, mo problems. Uh-huh. But I don't. Um, <laughs> I feel like you're so white saying that. Like I'm really like, white. <laughs> hey, newsflash. By the way, I'm really white. I am white. I'm saying the way you say it because you're like mo Mom. money. It should be like mo money, mo problems, girl. Yeah, like yeah. But um. Yeah. It's definitely mo. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's more. Yeah, it's supposed to be more the correct way. But it's but okay. anyway, I don't cooler. know about that. But when you don't have a lot of money or as much money as these celebrity people mm-hmm. have, you kind of, in a way, think like, "Fuck! Like, what are you worth?" Like, oh, sure, what I are do. You, what is I've been wrong? there before. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it obviously doesn't. It's not going to cure all your underlying issues. Mm-hmm. But if you use it the right way, I mean, go to the yeah. spa, girl. If you go, right. you know what I mean? I you're don't know. Stress, yeah. I was love stress, just taking away the stress of trying to take care of your family and like. But that's then think. But be. this is where I think then though too, like oh, I want to take the stress away and go to the spa and get away from people, and then all of a sudden now. <laughs> You go out and you got paparazzi following you, TMZ trying to get the latest story. Oh, I could handle like, Just so you guys know, I could handle it. Yeah. <laughs> if it I ever mean, happened. It's never going to happen. Has it happened to you? No. Ha- ha- well, I'm no. just curious. Have people ever followed you around? No. With like you and your acting career? Or like, no. has anyone written articles or anything about you that you've been like, oh, that's so not true. This is really unfortunate. So Why are they this, in my private life? I'm at this level of fame <laughs> that's so big. <laughs> That it's like gone, it goes full circle and Uh it's almost like it's so under, you know, it's the underbelly. Okay. The people don't actually know. No. 
You're so famous. I'm people s- don't even know. They don't know that they know me. You know what I mean? <gasps> yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> now you sound like Ross. So no, no. I what you know no, what I'm saying it. is it's, that no, no one fucking sarcasm, knows yeah. who I am. What Ross is saying is that I get no, I get recognized everywhere. Is what Ross would say. But <laughs> yeah. I don't. Yeah. I had a very a small level of like pop in uh, a movie that I did was in Sundance and did really well and was like bought by the Beastie Boys and we did like a tour with it That's that was awesome. a long that was like 2011 so it's uh, I'm a little bit of a has-been as far as that's concerned but I did have a lot of articles and stuff but they were just about acting and mm-hmm. things like there was no uh nobody was trying to get into my personal life because it was all like movie nerds got it because it was that level okay of, so like, it wasn't dramatic no so it was a, then- it was it was very big among people that love indie film, which is this whole other, you know, realm. Sure. That I'm not even it just doesn't in that realm. break. Yeah. It doesn't break anything big. I feel like people time. in the Sundance indie like movie realm just love the art of movies. Yes. And that's kind of what they're all about is what yeah. I've took on. Yeah. Because I will see these films sometimes up for awards and I'm like, I've never seen these before. Yeah. And to me, I feel like, they're probably really good, but I feel like there's been less drama around them. Oh, yes. Yeah, so so maybe don't... that's why people don't hear about it as much. Exactly. And things. that's sort of the problem or what's happening with movies that people in the indie realm are pissed, more pissed about than people that just go to movies kind of casually. Got it. Do you know what I mean? So real, real movie lovers are like people aren't making movies anymore because the movie theaters aren't being filled therefore they don't get money to make them and so it's sort of a dying if you're not a marvel movie Mm. then you just don't i can't to make it which is shitty but i might be one of the only ones in this i don't know when it comes to ladies but i really don't care for marvel movies that much like i don't like my husband like love him to death loves them but he always he's like hey let's go to movie theater and i'm like sure like i'll go but to me nowadays i rather just be at home in my own comfy couch and like rent a movie off of one of the bajillions of places you can now get them online and uh he's always like let's go to a marvel movie i'm like first of all i'm not spending like eight a pop to watch a marvel movie yeah i will watch deadpool that's like yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. the only one because I think that's funny. Or yeah. maybe um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Like the ones that are, I feel like have a lot more personality in them. Yeah. I will watch. Yeah. But beyond that, it's just not my cup of tea. Yeah. So, but to each their own. No, exactly. But. <laughs> I mean, you have kids. Oh, but they're too young probably for Marvel. They're too young for Marvel, but they're going to be into it. They will. They're going to be into it. So am, I'm probably going to be spending money on the thing that I'm, that is killing my industry right sure and that's yeah. just the way it's gonna have to go how ironic is that right how fucking sad that's so sad speaking of which how's your stay been it's been great so it's been good how's your airbnb i mean what's so if you guys don't know like i i, didn't, I drive a few hours out here to do these shows and as of now i'm staying in airbnbs mm-hmm. um you know dan has a place and he's like hey like it's large enough we have an extra i have an extra room you can stay in it but i respect my husband so i was like sure. hey like i dan and i've been really good friends for a while but my husband hasn't really met met him yet like we've all facetime before okay. and we've like he hears about dan a lot but sure. being a dude to a dude he wants to vet dan like himself right and i completely understand that and then after that he's gonna like determine like hey I th- yeah i think it'd be cool if you stay there or like no i would hope you continue to get airbnbs what if he says i continue you should continue what does that mean it would, would mean that, mean that, that would, he sees um, a connection with you guys i mean I what don't is know. it like i don't know like i think he wants to see maybe how like dan acts with me so he, chris is very like my husband's protective as i feel like any man would be right right so we're gonna let's just preface we're gonna get into this yeah um conversation only because we have a little bit different views we do have and different we views have different backgrounds mm-hmm. and we have different husbands. And I think everybody can sort of will be able to weigh in on this. Somehow so really, continue. Yeah. You and Dan are really close. You got, glo- you know, you've known each other for a year, two years. Yeah, like a year now. A year. But, but like, like talk often. Close. Yes. Whether he, it's just. He does not talk about any friend the way that he talks about you. So when he oh, says well, I have nice. a friend, you're. And you know, Dan. Yeah. So well, you know what the thing is too is like so the way I grew up I always had guy friends 
Yeah. And I'm not saying I had more guy friends and girlfriends. Like, I we love my girlfriends. girlfriends. Yeah. yeah. Like, I love my <laughs> We're girlfriends. We're not that. I only have guy no, friends. <laughs> they are, like, my girlfriends are my life. Right. But I've always had a lot of dude friends because I've, yeah. I've been very tomboyish. Yeah. And um, I'm not and one the of the dudes. military and all of this. But, like, like yeah. I just happen to get along with them pretty well. Sure. I think because I was never really a threat and I would wear, like, my umbro shorts as a child. Right. And, like play soccer with them and I was rough and tough whatever and I think we both have a background of being a little chubbier yeah I was younger. a little chunk I was probably like well at least especially when I first joined the military too I had like you know the fat I need to get rid of yeah it was definitely like uh, a little chubbier so a yeah. I had to work really hard to be you know funny have conversation sure. so the I, personality the personality uh and it you know it just works better yeah I was never that. like that super pretty popular girl in that school. it was just easy and you knew guys wanted to hang out with you because yeah, that was sarah that was like my best friend i had to actually work too yeah i would hang with the guys hang with the guys and they did was, it wasn't was, just off the bat where they were like hey we want to hang out with you it was like all right you're funny oh that's what i mean they you thought i was hang. funny they thought yeah. i was goofy they yeah. know i was super athletic so i was no threat to any of the girls Got it. either so it was just easier for them to hang out with me because none of the girls were like oh it's just tiffany like right. she's just your friend so i grew up like that and then of course being in the military i went into an all-male career field and when i'm saying all male literally i'm all that's male. no joking and we went over this yesterday it was me and like, like the first two other girls first first well first the first girl in eight years like yeah, yeah, yeah. in an eight-year period but yeah so yeah. i've always like we've slept in the same quarters we've slept in the same sleeping bag we slept in the same shelter like yeah. we've all roomed and dormed together yeah. like I, that's just been my whole life yeah and my husband knew this when he met me right because he met me ar- surrounded by all alpha males sure. this. so he that's something that he's been having to get used to because he realizes it's and part of my lifestyle yeah, yeah, yeah and it's also not just lifestyle because it's not like i choose it to like room with dudes but he it's, realizes part of what i have to do with work yeah it's your career so to me, um, it's a little bit easier for me to be like, hey, babe, you know, do you mind if I just stay with Dan? Like, obviously, he's just a friend. It, right. Just something I've been dealing with my whole life. Right. However, when I was talking with Ross about it, Ross was like, I would never let Jesse so stay at a dude's house. Ever. On the surface, here's how the story on just a surface level. Yeah. The story is Tiffany has a best friend. That's a guy that her husband has never really met. Yeah. So when she talks to her husband about her best friend, guy friend, it's someone that her husband has never mm-hmm. met and isn't friends with. And then you're going to stay. Well, I had just asked him, like, hey, would you be comfortable? Like, right, Dan right. invited me to say, hey, you could stay at my place and save of money. Of course, because Dan's just like, you guys are just friends. Right. So he's like, just come stay. That's what I mean. And so no bits. My hu- and I'm so open and honest with communication with my husband. Like, yeah. I tell him everything. Right. You know, and like he's seen the, like the way Dan and I talk, like we both have access to everything. It's not like we check on each other. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. He has nothing to worry about. Totally. So it's been one of those things, too, where he was just like, you know what? I would feel more comfortable once I met him. And I was like, totally fine. And that makes sense, right? Yeah. I completely respect that. And, you know, Dan is just a people person. He's going <laughs> to win him right over, isn't he? No. But um, no. I yeah. just it's it's interesting to have such different backgrounds and relationships and it's not that maybe it's just societal shit Mm -hmm. that makes us feel that way because you just go no you can't do that but then when you really think about it and break it down and like you breaking it down you're like okay but at the same time I guess for me and Ross it's like we just don't do anything that would make anyone uncomfortable because he has to travel and like take pictures and hang out with people and go to parties his work is a little bit different than going to military, right? Mm-hmm. So he has to go and basically party for a living with guys, girls, with everyone, whatever, all over the country. And so our main thing is like, I'm just like, be respectful. I don't want any pictures of like you and a bunch of girls yeah. or like, you know, even if there are girl fans, it's like be Keanu Reeves about it. Correct. Be respectful. So I just don't be want my, around yeah, because in the it's all relative, right? So then the housewives, like in my neighborhood, to them, even letting him go to oh, party wow. is crazy, right? Oh. oh, they can't even go. Like the husbands can't go, you know, anywhere late to have a drink. Do you know what I mean? They can't, they have to be home at a certain time. It's a lot of like he's, you know, it's just that's see that's completely it's a opposite different of my lifestyle. world, though. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's the world of like, no, we don't do that kinds of things. Like you mm. come home, you have kids, like 
and maybe I should be more like that. I'm not sure. But no, but I think for what we do, exactly. So for what we do um, f- in this industry, it's foreign to some people, natural to me. So I, I have to like deal with a lot of different people that look at the Instagram and go like, oh, uh, okay, Ross is gone again. And, you know, he's taken a couple pictures that I've had to be like, hey, you know, maybe you stand on this side of the guys instead of right behind the girl with your arm, you know, and he's like, Oh, she's covering me. Like I didn't feel, I didn't look good, you know, or whatever. He's like using people and he uses guys in that way too, where he'll like be in front of them. Right. And and I guarantee he's not thinking of it in any way, but you're, you're saying the perception of it. It's the perception Mm -hmm. of it. And this will go into Justin Timberlake, Timberlake a little bit where it's like, it just makes you, I don't want to look like a fool. Right. So with your husband right it's Mm -hmm. like you don't want he just you just don't want to do anything that's going to make him either look bad or feel bad right and that's just like across the board so whatever it may be as weird or as like irrational as like dude can i just fucking stay at my friends or do you know what i mean there's every relationship's so different though like totally and, and that's why i always tell people like what works for you works for you yes. and that's great absolutely and everyone has such different lifestyles yes like to me it's so foreign to be like no you're not gonna go out for a drink like he's out of town right now like on a temporary duty and he'll go out on the weekends with the guys and drink and everything like that and i don't care right and honestly sometimes i, I don't want to say all the guys but sometimes some of the guys get a little carried away or they, or sometimes guys will stray from their families right. when they're gone out of town. And they're and with your husband. Husband. So I have to deal with that too. Sure. he hangs out with fucking Jared and, and fucking whoever. And mm-hmm. you're like, I know you're not going to do, do that, that. But it's the perception of it. I know. It's the you're a dad hanging out. You know, so. But it's society. It's all these. It's so many it's things. So, it's hard. Well, that, for me, I, I guess I'm just so used to it now. And I'd hate to even say that because I don't want to think that. But we had to come up with something that works for us. Yeah. And so the, my biggest thing or his biggest thing is that if either of us are going to go out and drink, um, like he likes to know, like I like to know kind of who he's going out with, just like a group. And he likes to know. And yes. he, even if mine's all dudes, because it's happened before. Yeah. The biggest thing is at the end of the night, we FaceTime each other once we're back into the room or like on our way to the room once we're in the room so that there's no doubt in each other's yes. mind. And some people might be like, oh, that means you don't trust them. No, it means that we're not leaving any room for You're doing it for each other because yes. it will we're not leave any both. room for yes. wondering or drifting yeah. thoughts because I'm I'm sorry. I, like, you know, I had um, my ex and I had guys cheat on me before. Yeah. And I hate to admit, but sometimes I still have those you know, thoughts pop into my head. And just even sometimes our brain is like our worst enemy where we start overthinking things and going (laughs) like, wait, why? Yeah. And why is he not answering? And like overthink and overanalyze. And I have a whole fight with him in my head that he doesn't even know about. And he comes home and I've like already, I've done his part, my (laughs) part. I've gone back and forth. And then he said, cause I know what he would say. (laughs) Right. So I've already had the whole fight. And then he walks in and I'm like, "Uh uh-huh. Yeah. And he's like, what the what? fuck just I didn't happened? Do anything. I just, well, it's usually like he just got back from like a week long trip of mm-hmm. like, they stay out very late. I have to go to bed early for the kids. So I don't get to like FaceTime or talk. I have to wake up in the morning and be like, I hope that everything was good. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I hope, and I know it is, mm-hmm. but the thing that you have to be like, I hope that worked out. Yeah. Um, is hard. So, I think you're right. Just every relationship is different. That will take us into after the sponsors, though, why girls go a little bit crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we don't do it by ourselves. No, we sure do not. And we will not take responsibility for it. No, we will not. (laughs) There is blame to be placed. (laughs) And we will. And we will place it. Motherfucker. Like we both have our crazy faces. I know. The the big bug eyes. <laughs> yeah, if you yeah. watch it on YouTube, you'll see it. Yeah. But it's funny because every time Dan has invited Chris and I over, he always talks about us sleeping on his ghost bed. Oh, that's his, right. Which is perfect because we yeah. are talking about ghostbed.com. I know. For, forward slash drinking bros. Yes, we are going to get our own sponsors, our own thing. This will actually stay drinking bros, though, because it's the same for Ross Patterson Revolution. For every show that we do in the Tetherball Academy, drinking bros is just going to be the easiest across the board forward slash yeah. right but um we're gonna have to get you a ghost. I've heard nothing but amazing things about this bed it's the best i mean the support 
first responders and veterans, they give you 15% off. And then uh, little dingling dum-dums like me, they'll give some, like, deals. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, they'll throw us a bone. But I'm sure they're going to have great holiday deals because I know they, they had Cyber Monday. Yeah, so Cyber Monday's already gone, but they have this, like, wheel, spinning wheel thing that when you first go to the website, you can spin this wheel and you can either win you can win like a thousand dollars off of a bundle which is like um one of the beds and the adjustable base or one of the beds and sheets some kind of bundling of of all their different products you can get a thousand dollars off of that you can get free shipping you can get two hundred dollars off off a mattress which puts it to freaking five dollars at that point and then they have um no interest monthly payments so nice. like you're not paying on interest you're literally just paying off the bed, the bed every yeah. month and it ends up being like 36 bucks depending on what you get they have a bundle right now that's like 70 bucks a month but you get like adjustable base and bed and just check out the website go to the forward slash drinking bros website because that's gonna be the landing page for everything that you need but you know dude, what? when i was younger i literally bought like a 50 dollar mattress at like a cheap corner store and you're young, so you could kind of do it. And then someone later on was like, you have to invest in a bed. I know. A good bed. Because you spend like half your day almost on it. Do you remember when you like, or like a, first. Or like a third of it. First found out how expensive beds, beds were. were. And you're like, what is What this? the fuck? But then you were like, I'm going to pay it because I need a Obviously. good bed. So now I feel like this is a great deal because you get a great bed yeah. for a great price. And it's easy because it comes in a box. I've gotten them for. Oh, that's simple. The kids. Yeah. So you can just like take it upstairs like. I didn't do it by myself, but I feel like I could. Could have. Sure. I definitely moved the ones downstairs. I definitely moved them into the room by myself. So, so ladies, strong. any single ladies out there? That's any, some big uh, tit energy right there. You move that box Big tit energy, on yeah. <laughs> you don't need a man to move that bed around. No. You don't need to call a neighbor or you an uncle. You might throw your back, but you yeah. don't need them. Yeah. <laughs> well, because of all the mattresses we've been sleeping on, we have the back of a 70-year-old probably. probably. Don't you think? All the shit that we've done. Well, sure. you especially. Jumping out of planes. Yeah, that's How's dumb. your back? Oh, it's so, so wonderful. These actually, yeah. this bed actually changed my dad's life. Back Have they? Wise, so. You know, I typically testimonial. do to get rid of the pain in my back. I say I just drink champs. Champs? I, bring sh- I drink Smart. champagne. Smart. We call her, in the biz, we call her Segway Sally. Yeah. Because she just Listen, segways Listen, I'm an instructor beautifully. for a living. We had to do yeah. this all the time. And, <laughs> and I'll move you right where I want you to but go. But seriously, this. Look at this. You guys, so next Lux. sponsor is Luke. Or Luke. Yeah. Luke Belair. These are drinking. These were customized for the guys. I love which it. we're going to have to obviously get one for us. Yes. Broettes. Because they're not really drinking the champs. We kind of are. We do. But, um. L U C B E L A I R E dot com forward slash drinking bros. Um, holiday season. I know. If you don't get it any other time, you guys get a box. I have one at my house, and I literally just anytime there's a neighborhood party or anytime anyone's yes. even just like come over for a second because you should never come empty handed ever. So you just grab one, bring Perfect it over there, and they're like, Holy shit, because well, you can looks, tell it's nice, right? You have to say it looks fancy. But it tastes really good, it too. It does. You can actually drink it. Yes. Whereas, like, champagne, we know it's the best calorie-wise, but sometimes it's not the best, like, mm-hmm. tasting. So you kind of really get it dry, down. Like, oh, yeah. Can I put more fruit in this? Does yeah, it taste better? exactly. This one's not like that. No. This one has a little bit of a wine taste. We talked about it. The yeah, like, a I like little it. bit sweet, not too sweet no. at all. And there's all different ones. There's the Lux, the Golds, and the Rosé, which the Rosé seems like it would be really sweet. It's not. It's a really good, balanced, sparkling a Rosé. I'm popping that one for the holidays. Yeah, should we? I think we're going to send you home with some more because you're talking to your husband about killing him if he touches <laughs> it. You're going to yeah. kill his whole family. I was like, yesterday will, you were like, really? Cut off your male yeah. appendage if you not. Like, if your mother would your do sister. that, that's stupid. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, we need that. That's awesome. Yeah, so we're going to send you with some more. We have all those boxes over there. I think we can spare a few mm. for Tiffany D. Listen, it's also Tiffany too Hart. so that they, when he does drive me crazy. I can drink it. <laughs> Blammo. <laughs> Just yeah. numb the pain. <laughs> so we'll get into that then now. So, so we that s- drove me nuts yesterday. Yesterday on the Drinking Bros, the guys were talking about like, oh, girls are just, just crazy. Just crazy. Oh, by the way, have you done crazy things before? And yeah. I'm sitting there That's going the like, question. Well, what? 
like, unprovoked. What do you consider crazy? And they were yeah. like, um, have you looked through a guy's phone before? And I'm sitting there in my head going, the one time that I actually did, it was my ex-husband. Yeah. And, and you found was, something, it, didn't It was you? because it went off at 2 a.m. while I'm packing for my deployment. And I was kind of like, you know, just like, who the hell is... And then also I was like, wait a second. And I uncovered, I thank God I did. Yes. And honestly, because I uncovered so many lies that he told me for years upon years upon years in his phone that I was just like, well, thank God I found out now. Yes. You know? And you know what? Like, but I'm like, that's crazy. I was like, I, and, and after that, like, let's say if I did want to look through his phone more, because obviously if I found something then I would find more then. And that he would be like, she's crazy. She keeps going through my phone. Well, stop doing stupid shit. Yeah. I to make found me go through shit. your phone. Yeah. What they leave out about mm. girls being crazy is what brought them to that point. It's Correct. never, it's, they always start with, she put on a diaper and drove 18 miles yes. in an astronaut uniform to, you know what I mean? But what you don't know is, is the, the whole, whole story. story. Have you seen that documentary? Watch no, the di- I watch need to diaper see that. O- astronaut documentary. I mean, they, this guy was fucking with this girl, mm-hmm. right? And you know, we're hormonal sometimes and yeah happens if you let that be fine but provoked and driven to insanity Mm -hmm. nothing's crazier right nothing nothing will be more will be perceived more crazy than a woman that's been fucked with mentally as far as like if you didn't go through the phone and it was like oh dude come on that's my it's just my friend like what the fuck and they make you feel crazy right Mm -hmm. And so if you had not found that, you would have continued down a path of him making you feel like you're the crazy one for wanting to look through the phone, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And you would still be in this relationship literally being driven crazy. Mm -hmm. To me, and I think we might differ on this, I think the way God made us is he gave us a little fairy sprinkle of crazy, just like a little bit of a For sure. Every woman, right? Because I feel like to be um, a mother... And like be protective of your child, you dude, gotta be a little bit crazy. Dude. I feel like in order to like put someone in their plate, like you know what I mean, you have to have like just a little tiny ounce. What happens is I feel like when guys act idiotic, sure, okay, and string us along, sure, and literally will sit there and like provoke you and sit there and you're like, oh my god, look, I really do like you, and they'll talk to you nonstop and blah blah blah, and then all of a sudden they'll just ghost you out of nowhere, and you thought you guys had a good relationship, and then you start sitting there and kind of like texting them a little bit more or what they consider to be you blow up their phone and you're like hey what's going on and then all of a sudden they think you're crazy Mm -hmm. for it it's like no they literally like doused us with the crazy dust yeah is what happened yeah i mean we had a little bit already so what you're saying is we had a little bit because any you have to it's like survival of any all adventurous women do right which is like the same but i think it's a great thing have a little bit yeah of crazy which is why you like us Mm -hmm. which is why we're fun to hang out with correct which is why we're creative Mm -hmm. you can't have one thing without the other Other. right absolutely um find me like a really hot super fun cool chick that isn't a little bit crazy Mm -hmm. that there isn't like a bag of hair somewhere sure so that's just how it goes, right? One, you have to take one without the you other, do. right? Which is why guys deal with crazy chicks because they're fucking fun and cool. But yeah. anyway. But there's different levels of it. But what Absolutely. I'm saying, so like I always tell guys this, and I think it's the same that goes with girls. So when a guy's typically looking for a chick, and like even Dan, for example, Dan went for like super crazy. crazy. And obviously he likes crazy. But I'm like, hey, dude, like you need to find a level of crazy that works for you. Probably not. You don't need not to go this so kind of overboard. crazy. But maybe Whereas, you have crazy fights. Sure. And I think all and guys are that. assholes. I think every guy is yes. an asshole. Yes. I just think you have to deal with the level of asshole that you can deal with. Right. There's some girls who love like super big dickheads. Right. Like they just love the asshole. Yes. That's fine. Good on them. And there's some girls that are like, I want like the tiniest minute. Just you a know, little amount bit. of yeah. asshole. You just have to find what works for what you. Works for like you. my husband can be an asshole sometimes, but he d- he does it when it's needed, and that's perfect. And Absolutely. that's what I need. Absolutely, right? He needs to check me. I'm alpha female. He's an alpha male. He knows that there's times that he just will stay silent, and he also knows there's times that he will stand his ground. And he has to be like, "This is what I need. This is what needs to happen. That's it." Correct. He likes my level of crazy right he likes that i'm fun and goofy and you know can stand on my own ground but he also doesn't like that i just don't go completely off the rails yeah so you're not just like 
staying at dude's but house all strong. over the fucking country. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Listen, they have a ghost bed, okay? Listen, I want to try it. Dan's ghost bed in the fucking guest bedroom, not his. <laughs> but yeah. Jesus. They, but they honestly do. They drive us nuts. Absolutely. And I do, this is a good spot to put in a little th- words of wisdom that I say mm-hmm. all the time, which is like, there there are women, and especially after you have kids or that you've been married for 18, 20 years, whatever, that you're just like, I can't do this anymore. You're going through a thing like, relationships are roller coasters right and on the down time there's women that will talk about divorce and Mm -hmm. grass is always greener and i will tell you as far as guys you're you're just gonna trade one asshole for For another another asshole don't ever think that you're gonna get someone that's perfect and your husband's the shit no no one's perfect it will be a different kind of asshole and you're gonna have to find you're gonna have to find a new way to deal with that one and especially with and with guys too I always tell the guys when we go out, I'm like, they may seem like good time girls when you're partying, but sure. every single one of them will turn into a nagging girlfriend once you, you know, lock them down. Mm-hmm. Don't think that any of them are just going to be fucking cool no, yeah. all the time. I know it seems like that. Correct. When you're out partying with them and your wife's not there or whoever, right? You're like, oh my God, you're the coolest out. chick ever. Oh my God. Like, you just like, like, don't and care. like, you're like hey, remember, you thought that about me too. Yeah. And Listen, look at me human now. Beings, at the end of the day, though, <laughs> that's the thing that's so annoying. There is no such thing as perfection. No. There is no, su- no such thing as never fucking up, right? And the thing is, too, is you have to learn to deal with their fuck ups. He has to learn to deal with my fuck ups. You have to learn to work together. It's not always ra- rainbows and butterflies. That's the thing I hate, I think, sometimes about movies and social media nowadays is they, they portray these relationships to be perfect. Mm-hmm. And everyone's taking these like perfect selfies and constantly talking about their the relationships romantic. or all this. Be honest with each other or just don't post about it, yeah. right? And because what will happen is what I see a lot is these couples will constantly be flashing their relationships all around and it looks perfect, it looks perfect, and they'll talk about it and all of a sudden one day like they're divorced and, you're, and everyone's like, <gasps> what yeah. happened? And, and it's because they haven't so been real. so embarrassed because they were just... And especially if one of it. them is cheated on because you're just like, oh, my God, I just posted Did, like yeah. that we were so in love a week ago. And now I find the fucking text messages. Right. So just embrace chill. it, though. It's life. Chill. It yes. happens. Like, embrace it if it happens. To talk about. Listen, even in my last relationship like my last marriage even though like he fucked up a lot and did some really shitty things i was not the best wife either there were so many things right. that i learned from that relationship right. to improve upon yeah i was so hard on him i did kind of expect him sometimes to be perfect and i right. really regret that because i'm sure he probably was trying to live up to these super high expectations that he never thought he could live up to yeah you know and me and being started alpha, feeling bad about him i did yeah. yeah oh he did yeah and as a guy you want to build them up Right. And so I had to realize, I think it was like six months after our divorce was finalized. I hit him up because I had an epiphany and I sat there and I did place a lot of blame on him. Um, And we had a pretty amicable split. It was honestly pretty chill. Yeah. Um, But I just had to apologize to him. And I was like, listen, I am sorry, because I I feel like I really made it to be all of you when there's always two people in it. And there was a lot of things I did wrong, too. And these are things I'm going to hopefully, hopefully approve upon for my next relationship. And those are still things I'm kind of working on. And you'll always find new things to work on in your marriage, too. Yeah. But the thing is, at the end of the day, it takes two people working for it together. And the minute you start getting in that mindset, I feel like of going, oh, I don't know, this seems like a lot of hard work and like this guy is super cool and seems really nice and this seems easier. It's not going to be. It's not going to be. And it may be for a second Mm -hmm. to put a Band-Aid on whatever was wrong in your current relationship, but it will just happen again in the next one. Yeah. Exactly. One thing I will say, though, that you never should have put up with is obviously abuse. Right. Physical, mental, obviously. verbal, any of those things. Obviously, like, obviously. I'm not saying like stay in a relationship like that. No, no, no. Because the grass is not green but on the other side. But if you're a little bit unhappy, if you're not yeah. feeling fulfilled as far as like in the relationship and you're hitting a bad, a low point in the you roller coaster, lulls. really work on what you need to work on mm-hmm. and really try. Because I will say, again, either being alone people that have gone through hardcore divorces with kids and all of this like or long marriages of 18 20 years whatever you do realize that you know you are trading one dude one asshole one situation 
for another. <laughs> and maybe it'll be different and a little bit better, but if you don't address whatever it is that's correct happening in that moment, whether it's you, whether it's him, whether you need to go to therapy, whatever, it's mm-hmm. just going to happen in your next one. No, that's absolutely right. One thing that I noticed too is even I am selfish, right? I, th- I think everyone has a little bit of selfishness yeah. and that's fine. That's just how we are. But there are times that I really want him to do something for me. Like there's stuff that he needs to do for me, but I realize that if I'm not doing anything for him, in return to yeah. you know like yeah so sometimes in my selfishness where i'll sit there and be like you know what like you better i want him to be more loving and understanding and actually listen to me right right but then it, but i'm gonna sit there and not do what he needs and i know that yeah. he needs me to be complimentary and like cuddle on him and be cute and there's sometimes where i just don't feel like doing it no. and then i re- have to realize go no this it's a give and take yeah i need to be loving to him and i need to be the cute and cuddly girl that he needs and stop being so like strong all the time with his wall yes. up and then once he gets, he's getting that, he's also going to be more loving, understanding, and listening. Like, right. listen to me. Right. So that's one of the things I'm, like, still learning. <laughs> Girl, I'm learning know. every day, man. <laughs> Girl, yes. please. But yeah, that is some big tan energy right there. Oh, my gosh. I'm like, you say this. I love this term <laughs> so much. What was they saying? Oh, I wanted to get your take really quick on the... Justin, do you, have you tried the Justin? I haven't. When you brought it up, I was oh, a little bit okay. confused. So, so he, I want you to explain the Justin Timberlake thing. So he uh, was caught, um, and I don't know if you have heard, there's there's always like a rumor or a blind blind item about him cheating on Jessica Biel since no. they've been dating. Since they've I been dating. I love her too. Do you? I Why? Don't, I, you know, I don't, well, I know she's into politics now. I'm just saying I loved no, her no. when she was in Seventh Heaven. Oh, yeah, we all did. And, like, I just we loved her did. growing up as yeah. um, she was just very cute. And um, like No, I think people love her, for that's sure. That's what I mean. For sure. you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, I know, that she, I, I'm sure our views probably don't line up, because I think I, like, saw some things on Instagram that I was like, oh, I didn't know you believed in that. Yeah. And that's fine to each their own. I oh, will I never judge like someone by that. Oh, I huh? I have a really good friend who's an anti-vaxxer, actually. You know, and that's what I mean. Teach Look, when own. it comes to your kids, like, do whatever you that's need what to do. That's what I tell her. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, I respect your opinion on it. I will not tell you what you can and cannot do, obviously. Or just say research. Like, do way more yeah. research and than she, just internet. I was internet. like, I won't push whatever my stuff is on you. Please don't push your stuff For on sure. me. It's a respect thing. That's it. For sure. Um, but I, I always loved her, I guess, in that aspect. Growing up, watching Seventh Heaven. Yeah. And then also, I think she's gorgeous. And a couple people before have been like, I think you look like Jessica Biel, which I don't see any resemblance at all. I think you all. do. But when back I got day, that, yeah. I was like, that's the best compliment in the Yeah, world. no. Back in the day, for sure. Right Thank now, you. she's a little bit skinny. And Is she? She's Is it for a role? Uppity. No, no. She just like, she just had a kid and then went too far with like trying to lose weight and working out. She just went a little bit too far to where she looks just a little bit skinny, right? Oh, okay. Too skinny. Um, but anyways, there's always these rumors. So he was in New Orleans shooting this sh- movie, Palmer, and he is caught on paparazzi, zoomed in uh, camera with his co-star, drinking on this balcony. It's There's other people there, but he's drinking and under the table, they're holding hands. Oh, and, no. um. They're both like putting their hands on the legs and like kind of holding hands and drinking. And it's feel, you could tell that either something did happen or it's going to happen. So he came out with a statement that was just like, you know, I had a huge lapse in judgment, but nothing more than the hand holding happened with my co star. And we just kind of let it go. Mm. Do. Do we think that they just held hands drinking in New Orleans that one night? This is where we go back into the perception thing that you were talking about before. He's in no matter what the limelight, he did. right? Yeah. They're, they obviously, as a couple, have to establish boundaries and realize, like, and maybe have the same talk. Or I don't know. It's every relationship's very different. So I don't know if she's sitting there going, like, no, that's okay. Like, And so that's what I think. I don't know. What I was saying to Ross on the other show was, like, at this point, I feel like they must be in some kind. There are so many rumors mm-hmm. throughout the years that at this point, they must be in some kind of agreement, open, open marriage. But yeah. she must say, like, it just can't be seen. Like, don't make me look like an idiot. Yeah. But clearly, you're going to do whatever you're going to do. And so when he he's able to stay with her because they fight about the fact that people took a picture, but they don't fight about the fact that it actually happened, happened right because like, otherwise what were you really doing otherwise that's someone that 
had Wait, sex so that they night. Were mad? That's someone like, that-, that someone took a picture of them holding hands and people were addressing that. Like, how no, did- no, no, no. Oh. I'm saying what I th- when I think about Jessica Biel and Justin Timberlake having the conversation about it, it must be. Oh, like how did you they let someone take in a picture an, oh, yeah. of you holding that girl's hand? Where instead of she, you were thinking she should be upset. Like, wait, if it, you just held hands, I would never believe. I'll tell you this: on a I would never believe in a million years that you just held hands. With I wouldn't her. either. But drinking that's just me. with me hundreds of miles away, you drinking at night, going back to some hotel room, I would never believe you in a million years that all you did was hold hands me with neither. her that one night on that one balcony the one time paparazzi took a picture i would know that a lot more happened behind the scenes so and let's just say just for example that they only did hold hands right let's just say why does it have to be on that balcony that open i know i get it but i'm just saying let's just say you as the the wife though unfortunately you have no other way to think besides to go, why would he even do that? That's not even like him. This is not. This is completely out of character. They were drinking. They're alone. And that's where your mind goes. And unfortunately, he put you in that situation to think of those things. Right? Yeah. Because you would never have thought that before. But I don't think it's an isolated incident with them. No, but yeah. I know. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, though, yeah. Even if it was but completely even, innocent. So you're saying even putting you, and this is what I'm in saying, that too, position. is shitty enough for me to be like, fuck you. Right. Like I can't fucking... And so the, the thing is, like, it, let's say, for example, like, he texts it. Jessica Biel and was like, hey, I just want to let you know that, like, I'm, you know, hanging out at this little party and this girl's kind of drunk and she, like, held my hand Holding a few times hand. and I, like, tried to push her off. And I just want to let you know this because it made me feel uncomfortable and I'm just communicating this with you. And I think it might have been, like, I don't know if other people saw. To me, if I knew that beforehand, in all honesty, if I knew that beforehand and he preface that to me before a picture or anything came out i would way more believe him when he was like i swear nothing happened because he was up front yes. and honest with me and he didn't even make a statement addressing it for like three days after Ugh. so they were clear he was clearly going back and forth with his publicist what he should say how she did he should address it that's just about he look. needed to call the wife i'm sure he didn't tell her before mm-hmm. i'm sure because he wasn't pushing her hand away <laughs> Yeah, I know. He was full I'm just on giving holding so many it. different yeah, scenarios, yeah, yeah. though. Yeah. You know what I mean? But what a bummer. You know what? When you were even saying that to me, my stomach dropped a little bit. Yeah, because right? you love Justin. You love Justin and well, Jessica together, right? Just even, like, it, just, one of those... it hurts my heart to think that, like, people have pro Like, if you have a problem in your relationship, stop fucking putting so much energy into anyone else and put that energy into your own relationship to make it better. Right. Right. If you are if him and Jess were having problems, don't you dare drink with another attractive woman, you know, woman who you, clearly you've been flirt. Even if it was just that like, you flirted with her and you she dare. thought, you know, that there was something and tried to hold your hand and nothing else happened. Fine. Yeah. But you did all of that. Right. Yeah. You th- got to that point. It's just a bummer. What I tell my husband is, listen, if it gets to the point where you really don't love me anymore and you're honestly thinking of being with someone else, me. please just leave. That's like, what I told Ross. Even I, go, if I kids, will let you know. Yes. And that's the only thing I want. I want open honesty. I want to be able to trust you. Open communication. Be forthcoming with me. If he's like Tiff, you know, like I feel like there has been a connection for a while lately. Like, and he's been like talking to me and like I don't feel like I'm in love with you anymore and this is really really hard for me but like either I would like to work this out or maybe if you feel the same way we can split I'd much rather have that and then once we split you go do whatever you want yeah then do that disrespectful shit to me in our relationship and make me look stupid which is not even do that but just hurt like break the hell out of my heart right oh my god that's like isn't that funny I care more about how you look <laughs> looking stupid i mean and you're you like wait too. a minute our relationship maybe i'm like oh yeah yeah, yeah. that too. no but yeah but i yeah. mean that's the biggest thing it's like <laughs> the biggest heartbreak but yeah it's like telling people because m- making you look stupid is in turn making you feel stupid so it is really a, it's how you, you feel right and hurting mm-hmm. you yeah. um no it's that's oh what a bummer i know but hey well hey hold on let's lighten it up a little let's bit lighten it up i want to hear this na- uh, nature so pimp I did, story i know we built it up now it's like it's not gonna <laughs> be good about- but yesterday so it is uh episode dose as we said earlier in yeah. spanish um so our second episode we got to uh gabin 
Gavin yesterday and then today turned into a relationship episode, which I, I love. Which is fine, yeah. I which is it. fine. Mm-hmm. That's what we're here for. Mm-hmm. We're experts because we are in relationships. We're experts because I feel <laughs> like we've I'm had a lot of like relationships. I just feel like I fucked up enough yeah. to be like, hey, learn from my mistakes. And we just, you know, when we are going to continue to learn. We oh, yeah. literally do not know everything. Always learn. But so I grew up in Ojai, California, which is okay. very hippie. Lots of hills, lots yes. of like hiking always. When you go to drink, you guys like hike up into some place, right? And you like, there's little areas where you drink or whatever. It's just all nature. And if you're a kid and you're trying to like drink underage, some some towns have like cul-de-sacs. Some people have the house that they go to and yeah. they drink in someone's backyard. So in Ojai, it was just like all these different nature areas. So that's just the preface of, I sort of was, I was dating this guy. He worked for the forest. Yeah, like a forest, forest agency. Something, forest service. Forest service, yeah, right? Where he had he a good, that's do, a good job. Forestry service. Yeah. yeah. So he would like. Governmental job. Yeah. It was sort of like reserves where if there is a fire, he kind of just like sure. does that stuff. So he's very versed in all of the mountains, hikes, all of this stuff. So we would go on hikes as our dates. and Cute. Right. So we'd go on the hike and I'm like, okay, let's go on a hike. You're drinking, you know, you take a drink or whatever. You go on the hike. It's nothing real treacherous. You're just kind of walking in nature to get to a place where you can hang out. I love how you're burning calories as you drink calories. As you drink. Perfect. Yeah. That's oh hi, right? I love it. And then when you come back down, you're good to get back in your car. Yeah. Um, And so, so he, we would go on these hikes and every time. He must have had this set up before, but every time he would, we would stumble upon, like, the first time it was a teepee. So we were going on this hike, and we're just like, I don't know where we're going, really, and then we'd stumble upon this teepee. Like a random, naturally occurring teepee. No, he knew where it was, and it was his, (laughs) or something. And I was like, okay, so you're, like, stuck up there. You've gone on the hike. Uh Now you're going in the teepee. Okay. Yeah. You're hooking up. Okay. And it probably like he would, definitely had that set up. Oh, it was all set up. Homeboy was like prepping this for Nature weeks. pimp. <laughs> we go on another hike. Boom. Oh, so it's a different area. I go, okay, we're not going to the teepee place, right? So it's a totally different hike. Uh-huh. There's no way that he has a boom tent set up. And I'm like, what the? So no you set way. either you on your forest excavations, whatever, you set up all these little fucking nature pimp areas. <laughs> Third time I go, there's no fucking way, right? It's a different, it's just a different, like totally different path. I know this road. It's almost like a bigger dirt road. Uh So I know this. I know where the drinking thing is. Boom. We come on this cabin, family's cabin, some kind of weird, like shack type cabin that we walk up and I'm like, dude, he literally has everything mapped out on his phone. Dude. All the points of everything. And I had never heard of this guy. You know you're the first girl who's done that with too. You're like 12 or something. But I'm like telling these people, like my friends, and they're like, oh my God, that's that's a nature pimp. So we like named him nature Nature pimp. pimp. I don't know where else it'd be able to happen in the world, right? I I guess there's people that probably do this, but that he set up a full on teepee for this hike. He set on like a big tent for this other it's hike. A lot of effort. Then he has like a family, like it's not a cabin, it's a shack, right? So uh-huh. there's like a bed and like a chair. So it's literally like a hookup shack. Were that the he sheets has. on the bed like new? Were they like I old think we and hooked cobwebby? up on like a couch? Like there, we didn't even go on like the, a cum stain couch, like a it like was definitely, creepy couch. Yeah, like oh, there wasn't. It didn't seem like you there was electricity. It, like I just. At that point, the cabin was the last time because I just go, fucking A, dude. Did you feel like, like with the effort he put into it, you're kind of like, eh, I kind of feel like I have to now. Well, you're, st- you're stuck. I mean, this was before date rape was like a thing. Uh-huh. You just did. You just had sex. Um, You didn't always want to have sex when you had it, right? Sure. Well, it's not like date day, rape. It wasn't like it's they not pressure, like, It wasn't you know, like that he made you, but you kind of felt a little bit pressured, consent, so you just kind of did it. Oh, full on pressured. It was dark. We went on this fucking trail. He's the only guy that's going to be able to get me back down. Yeah. So yeah, you're like pressure. He's cute. I yeah. I obviously liked him. If I keep going on the hikes, right? I didn't really want to hook up every fucking time, but 
that's just how he set it up. <laughs> Smart as shit, right? And then this goes back to your Tinder guy that turned fucking crazy. crazy. So finally I was like, no, we're not going on a hike. Like he wanted to go on another hike, right? Like, For the no. next date. I go, no, we're not going on a hike. No more hikes. No more fucking hikes, dude. I don't know what other weird fucking house thing you have set up on this other hike, right? No more hikes. So we're going to go to dinner. And I, um, I had to work or something and I was at work late. He came to my work with a shirt, like a white shirt on that he ironed. And he was just like, I ironed a shirt for you. I, I, it was like this big deal. So we have all these like things that we can make fun of with this guy. So it's, he's nature pimp. And then he ironed a, I ironed a shirt. Like it was so fucking monumental. Right. (laughs) And I was just like, holy shit. It was like stalker vibes, like at my work, like I'm still working. And I'm like, holy shit, dude, nature pimp just got fucking uppity. About having to wear a shirt. On a hike anymore. Yeah. And then he's he like, I'm like, taking you to dinner. 45 minutes to iron his shirt because he's probably never done it before. He's probably so never he done it before. Really big deal. Yeah, because his date attire is fucking hiking boots, cargo shorts, right? Like, mm-hmm. he's and never had to actually dress woods. up. Jesus. Dude, I mean, I will commend him for the creativity Look. and for the effort he put forth. Uh, thank God he wasn't like, um, like Look, a Ted, and, d- thank God there was like no Ted Bundy. Weird exactly. Look, vibes, I know because that could have been a very bad scenario. Yeah, I knew him. He's married to one of my really good friends right now, which is, is why he? I'm not saying his name, <laughs> and she doesn't know any of this story. <gasps> no, she doesn't. No. Are you kidding? No. So and you I'm ever, trying have to you think in your head around her, been like nature pimp. Like when you see him, like, it's hey, so uncomfortable. Pimp. Like I don't oh, sure even see weird. when I go home. I don't even. She's wanted to get together a couple times, and I can't. Yeah, that's because that's awkward. I don't even know if she knows. Like, it wasn't a relationship where people would be like, oh, Jesse and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it was dated. just some hookups in the woods. Yeah, it okay. was just uh, some nature pimping, <laughs> you know, <laughs> happening. Probably the end of his nature pimp days. Probably, because you then, put a kaput to it. Yeah, because he maybe met her later. I don't know. And maybe she was, and she's an avid hiker. <laughs> oh, my God. He, You know what? She is. She hikes all the fucking time. Dude, he got her. He got her, dude. And she was like, yeah, you've got a fucking place every hike. She was loving it, probably. And I was just yes. like, hey. And he was like, I don't even like I'm going to marry this woman because she loves She's into my it. nature pimping ways. She's down with it. And see, this other little saying. bartender bitch was made me iron a shirt. Didn't even show up. Look, I went to all your little fucking nature houses that you have set up. So... Your you nature d- you palaces. You definitely deserve to iron a shirt uh, yeah. for me. You, you could have ironed a done shirt that. and then I didn't call you fuck you. you Listen, know I, I gave mean? you a blowy when I didn't even want to. No. So. But it was, again, it was classic. Like, I didn't feel, I don't want to, I don't want to say, na- I'm don't, I don't say nature rapist. Like, yeah, right? Yeah, I, I say nature pimp. Oh, I hope not. Like, That's... he was good looking. He was, sure. I, uh, like I said, I obviously went on the fucking hike. And by the third time, shame on me, right? It's like, it's you like you should have known. Twice. Like, you I should have known. known there was going to be something. I thought happen. it'd be a little bit nicer than a fucking bang shack. But look, <laughs> he was grabbing at <laughs> straws at that at point. At least you could have put some nice yeah. sheets up or something. Yeah, exactly. Light a and candle. Iron them. I couldn't fucking see shit. Yeah, iron some sheets. Iron dude. those sheets. Stop ironing Listen, your shirt. Listen, there's going to be times in your life or relationships where, like, because guys just have, it, most men have a very high sex drive right it's true and even my husband like there'll be times that i'll jump on him and be like hey this is awesome and right i would never say that there's ever been a time in my life where i wanted to have sex with a guy and he was like no like this never happened to me no but there's definitely been times before where maybe i'm like not feeling myself or like i'm pmsing or i'm just honestly not in the mood that maybe my brain's just like so full of everything that i just don't feel like it yeah but there's been times before because i love my husband or i really like the guy i was with where i willingly did it because i knew it meant a lot to him you know and yeah i just kind of didn't want to as much but i did it because but listen like i I said because i like them yeah and that that was back in the day when consent like in like major consent wasn't a thing right where now you know nature pimp couldn't happen right because he would need he would need to make sure before we go on the hike that everything is okay and then even while we get up there he needs to make sure that every step of the way i'm okay with it right yeah he definitely did not really do, do that. that now i don't know that i mean I you're supposed to i mean i do that's think the deal they're now. definitely i don't think you have to be that dramatic where it's like hey we're gonna go on a hike and just to let you know 
I really like you a lot, and I find these sex- find you sexually attractive. So maybe and I later set up a on, teepee. I might on like, the top put of the my hill. hand on the small of your back yeah. and maybe kiss you. And it'd be really awesome if something later on happened. But only if you approve before we go on the hike. Like to me, that's really like I'm like wow, that's weird. Well, that was the problem. However, got there does have to be boundaries where. If let's say you, for example, right, and Nature Pimp was like getting it on, and you were kind of like, no, I, I really like this, but I just, I want to let you know that I really don't want to go too far. I don't want to have sex with you. Right. I'm willing to do other things, but and him as a man needs to respect your boundaries and go, okay, absolutely, sure. Like, but I know, you know now from the ironing shirt incident, it probably wouldn't have gone that well. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Which is why I didn't go on another hike after that. You smartened up. Well, because how he handled needing to iron a shirt shirt and freaking out and freaking out that i like had to work late and wasn't able to call him and let him know um i kind of got a glimpse into what it would be like if i was like hey you know what i mean yeah no thanks you know what's so funny is whatever and i know that if a girl did that guys be like she's psycho she's so crazy oh yeah but when a guy does it it's like no you know there's some guys that are like well you should have called him yeah you should you you definitely (laughs) You drove him to that point. You drove him to that point. He's he ironed like, a shirt. But really? Nature pimp. Did I? Because that's crazy. That's loco. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And the Tinder guy. Like, your Tinder guy. Like, oh, that yeah, guy went fucking super, crazy. Um, but I bet someone would be like, yeah, but you were you were not telling him where you were. were you were being late yeah, when you, you were driving out there. Yep. He just really likes people to be on time. It's one of his things. No, that was controlling. That was a red, red flag. Yeah. You know, like, where are you at? What are you doing? How did you wipe your ass today? Yeah. It's like, (laughs) do do you really want to know that? Yeah. I mean, I'll (laughs) tell you. I mean, okay. I mean, I tell everyone that. Did I do it wrong? (laughs) I just wrap my hand in a ton of toilet paper. Until the whole roll I put around. (laughs) And then I just jammed it in there. (laughs) And hope that it got everything out. I'm so bad about that, though, because I grew up with, like, very thin toilet paper. Yeah. So you had to do that because if not, your finger went through. I probably used more than I should. And now I get, like, the super nice toilet paper where it's super thick. And I'm surprised I'm not clogging toilets left and right because of that. Because we're still using the same. We're still using because I grew like, up, we didn't grow up with a lot. Yeah. We grew up with very limited things and we didn't have nice things. Right. So when it came to toilet paper, we got what we got. Have you ever had to use the actual cardboard roll oh, to yeah. wipe yeah. anything? When you don't have someone to spare you a square and Pee you're just sure. like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like my I husband's just put it, in I there crump it and down and yeah. make it just like <laughs> yeah, just like this is really uncomfortable, but yeah. this will work. It's gonna work. Oh, it's gonna totally have to work. Dangle dried before. I mean, I Which survive out so in the woods, right? Yeah. And there's honestly sometimes I rather pee out in the woods than in, 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 in like a really shitty gas station bathroom yeah. or like a porta potty. Like yeah. I'm like, no, give me oh, a bush. For sure. Yeah, give me a great tree that I can lean up against. And you don't sometimes <laughs> you don't have stuff. <laughs> yeah, so you just do a little like dingle, dangle, dingle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, or like a little air dry, like mm-hmm, whoa, 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 with your mm-hmm, hand. Mm-hmm. Um, or if you're really into it, and you don't like your t-shirt, just start ripping the sleeves off your t-shirt and uh, use that. Oh, that's smart. I yeah. used sock before. But yeah, then you just go it's hard when you're, when you're rocking around in the woods. Yeah, you oh, need yeah. your sock. So Different life. Sorry. I just take my yeah. t-shirt. From, smart. Yeah, my Air Force t-shirt. No, that's smart. There's been one guy who literally um <laughs> took so many field shits. Sure. That he, he, came no back with, he came back with a crop top on. <laughs> yeah. and we're like, dude. <laughs> really? We're like, that's cute. <laughs> Real cute. I guess you didn't he have was a like, square. Listen, it's been a rough day. Yeah, I'm like, I'm bet. sure it has. I think he took pre-workout before he like went. Oh, I don't know. Guys do stupid things sometimes. And he took pre-workout. They just think they're invincible. And they think it's just, not going to affect them. It was a never-ending flow. Just poo from his booty hole. You know, Gosh. he learned. He learned that day really hard. Those can be really great days, though. You feel like 10 times lighter. But you anyways. Do. You're like, this was great. Yes, this was productive. <laughs> I'm so glad we're on it's the It's not poodle. horrible sometimes, you know? If you've got a day off, get it Might out. Might as well. Get it all I've out. I've been honestly thinking about doing, like, a juice cleanse because I've been... I don't believe in those, really. Yeah. Like, definitely not for losing weight. That's super not smart. Stupid, yeah. And I might even say in a cleanse, I'm just, I've been traveling so much lately and eating like shit that part of me just wants to intake some juices, not for a meal replacement, but just because I need something healthy. Yeah, just because you need nutrients. Yeah, I got a salad for for lunch and I'm so excited about it. Oh yeah, you didn't eat it? No, I mean, no, I'm going to eat it, but I'm just saying like, I'm just so excited. I'm like, give me those greens. Oh yeah. Give me some fresh 
we all i feel like we all get at a point where you're like you're like finally water and like you're chugging it yeah and you taste the vegetable and your body goes huh ah. Yeah, you like have all this energy. Am I looking skinnier today? Yeah, I ate kale. Yeah, exactly. One salad, and you're like do going have, out in do a I bikini. Have abs yet? Yeah, no. no, no, not really how it works. <laughs> um, we're gonna get to the drinking yes. broette of the week again. So, guys, we, I mean, we really. I hate to sound like a, a turd or a nerd, but I really hope that you guys like this show. And yeah, it, it fills really the void uh, or fills some kind of um corner of the drinking bros world right where we have drinking bros we have ross patterson revolution for mm -hmm. like you know up-to-date news or weird hollywood shit la bullshit and then this i hope is something that can complement all of those things and that you find i don't know some kind of fun i just want you guys to have fun i said we and we'll take feedback yeah so criticism. once we get into the group we're gonna have you guys nominate broettes and yes. it's gonna be more like the drinking bros model but for now again episode dose dos. what is it in french we never figured that out well so do un, do, do. okay so it's episode do. Do in do toi? I think it's do. I don't know. Again, I suck at French. So <laughs> again, we thought we were gonna go to Paris. Still but we have it. never gone. Um, but yeah, so the <laughs> with the drinking bro at okay. With the drinking bro at drinking bro at who do you week? nominate? I'm nominating this girl, Tesla Dawn. Okay. okay. So if you guys go on Instagram, it's at Tesla Dawn. So she joined the Marines, I think about five or six years back. And when you were going through, you get all your vaccinations, right? And she was so excited to serve in the military and serve our country. And unfortunately, she ended up getting a contaminated vaccine. Oh a God, two a like two percent of like the population gets a, a contaminated yes. vaccine. Yeah. And I don't know. It's a laundry list of just things that are wrong with her. But first of all, like half the day, she's paralyzed from the waist down. So she's in a wheelchair. Other days she can completely walk just fine because and she of doesn't this. know what the she days are going to be. She doesn't know when be. it's going to happen. She doesn't know how when it's going to happen. Holy shit, she doesn't dude. sweat at all. Um, she can barely keep down food. So there's times where eating with her at a restaurant, and all of a sudden she'll go to the bathroom, and she's is because she cannot keep down her food. Um, her body's like literally like shutting down on her. She's had to get like chemotherapy. Like she has like a chest tube. Like she is going through hell. Right. And the thing that is so inspiring about her is that she has the best attitude on life. Yeah. She does not bullshit. She lives every day like it's her last. She's giving it at all. She loves working out in the gym. Dude, she's one of the buffest, strong, not even buffest, but the strongest chicks that I know. Yeah. And like half the time her legs aren't even working. So she's just lifting her upper body. But and we complain about it. Right? right. And so like literally she does not know when she's going to die. Right. Um, but she's giving life her all. And she's giving people her all. And she's one of the most loving girls I know, one of the most giving people that I know. And I am so inspired by her. So I obviously think that this drinking bro of the week definitely should go to Tesla Dawn because she has she been handed, amazing. unfortunately, a very you know shitty situation and she's making the best of it so should we follow her and she's just like an yeah, so inspirational she is she'll obviously post, like her person. workouts but she also posts things that are going on in her life or just things she's learning from her experience with this disease and and she has a very different perspective on life than i'm sure some people do because yeah. she doesn't know when life's what over the for fuck her is gonna happen yeah Jesus so if you guys want to follow her someone just for inspiration or someone you can oh, yeah. talk to like she'll shoot you straight man she's there's no bullshit and because she's like I, I have no time to bullshit people because no. i'm isn't that great dying. and i love i love Hell real yeah. authentic authentic people who yeah. aren't like sitting there fake to your face so she's yeah. real man so she's Sweet. amazing i love her at tesla dawn on instagram if you guys want to follow her yeah so she's great beautiful so this is the you tesla my water but I'm hydrating for you. Cheers. This might be coffee. We don't know. Yeah. Maybe wine. Maybe mm. maybe it has alcohol in the coffee. We never know. But we I do I actually it's funny. We're gonna do one drunk. Oh, we at have least to. a few because I yeah, yeah, yeah. like you are amazing, but you're so the, some of the things that you say when you drink are hilarious. <laughs> I don't even know, but Exactly. That's, yeah. But I also think you like your bullshit factor also goes down even more. Like yeah. you don't put up with anything. <laughs> when Let's you're drinking it. and i love it <laughs> but thank you guys for being with us for episode thank you two. so much 
Um, this is Tiffany Hart. And this Where is Jesse Wiseman. The real Tiffany The real Hart? Tiffany Hart. On, ins- on Instagram and all the bullshits. I'm yeah. Jesse Wiseman on all the bullshits. Thank you so much, guys. Let's do this again. Yeah, absolutely. Let's meet up for round three. See you next episode. Yeah. Yeah, you've been watching every move and plotting your next move on every girl I'm moving on. Yeah, don't show.